All right, guys, uh, GBG. This is a little different than the content that I usually talk about, uh, but I had a newer player ask me to make a little tutorial on GBG terminology as well as strategy, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, let's go over some key terms first, and then once we understand the terminology, we can look at some strategy, okay? Key terms, and probably in order of importance, is going to be uh, camp. This is somewhat interchangeable with the term support. That is somewhat interchangeable, um, but there is a distinction there that I'll clarify. Um, second key word is what we just abbreviate as ATTR in the game, um, but this means attrition. That's another big topic. Um, rush is a common word, and this means accelerate the building of a camp by using diamonds. So this is a diamond purchase. And the last word is race. Um, if you guys are GBG experts already, then just don't even watch this video. This is going to break it down for the noobs. Um, so if you already play GBG, uh, just delete this from your watch list. Um, but if you're new to it, or kind of familiar, but you're trying to understand some of the strategy behind it, hang with me, and we'll, we'll get into it. Um, so four keywords here. We got camp, as well as support. Um, they, they do apply to the same thing, but they have kind of different purposes. Camp and support is one idea, attrition, rush, and race. So let's get into it. Um, camp is a, a building, and this tile is ours. We control it. There's nothing planted on it. You do need leadership rights in order to build on tiles. So when we talk about camp cost, what we're looking at is the cost of the goods. And sometimes uh, the, the camps that we're building, uh, like this 20% this camp, for example, is actually really not favorable to our inventory. We don't have a lot of people in Progressive Era, so we try not to spend those goods. Where the 60% camp is actually perfect for us because we have... Um, roughly 2 million combined of, of those resources um, because most of our players are in those eras. So the camp cost makes this a favorable building to build on. And we call it a 60% camp because it gives a 60% chance to not increase our attrition rate. So this, uh, this fortified guild command post gives 60% support as we attack and it's also favorable on our goods productions. So I'm going to go ahead and build that. You do need leadership rights to build uh, build or delete camps or tag tiles. So if you're in a guild um, where you're, the team is not building camps um, or, or tagging tiles, that's probably something that you should address with leadership. Um, but our, our guild is pretty active. We've got people that play at night, early in the morning, so we're pretty active all around the day. Um, so, uh, the, the, there's two separate types. The, this top group of three right here um, give support while you attack, but they also provide victory points, and I'll explain that in a second. This bottom group of three... Um, just provides support for attacking, but does not generate victory points. But they both serve the exact same purpose in terms of supporting the attacking army. Um, some of the camp costs in here, um, like these are not goods that we produce a whole lot as a guild. We can trade down to get those, but uh, we don't have players in those eras, so their arcs aren't generating those resources. Um, so th that's what we mean when we talk about camp cost, right? Um, when we say 20%, 40%, or 60%, we're looking at the attack boost that these camps give um, when you go to 
attack from that tile. Um, so right now we have A4B that's tagged. And you can see you can on mobile, um, I think you can do it on desktop the same way. But on mobile you can see uh, this 20% and 40%. Um, the 20% is a 20% chance of increasing your attrition, that's our keyword number two, increasing your attrition as you engage on that tile. Uh, so meaning, if I hit this tile 10 times, my attrition should increase by two. Uh, one in five chance of increasing my attrition. So there's uh, four, four hits, I think, I, I went up by one. about 10 hits, right? Something like that. I'll go until my attrition clicks up the, the next level. We got diamonds, that's cool. I'm gonna talk about that in a second too, actually. Uh, apparently I'm getting lucky, because my attrition is not going up, even though I've hit more than 10. So I'm getting lucky on that one. Yeah, it's not going up. Um... Whereas a 40 percentile means there's a 2 out of 5 chance that your attrition will go up by hitting that. So let's try this tile. Yep, my attrition went up on the second hit. And every time your attrition goes up, it means it's going to be harder and harder to fight. Went up again, so I've already accumulated 2 attrition a third time. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So my attrition is going up pretty quick on this uh, 40 percentile, right? I've already accumulated, uh, that would be 5 attrition that I've accumulated on that. Let's say we hit 100 percentile. Uh, this is guaranteed to increase your attrition every time you engage on it. 100% uh, means 100% likelihood of increasing your attrition to hit that tile with me so far? Yeah, those tiles are not fun. So, uh, let's come back to this 20%. This 20% is um, when you click in and out of this uh, information tab, it'll show you the buildings that we've planted. So we've planted 60% support plus 20% support. So this tile has, uh, we're getting 80% support off of this tile out of 100 means there's 20% support on that. Um, Inno made a change that uh, su uh, support is is max, maxed out at 20%. So we actually have a 60% support on this tile as well. 60% applied to this tile, and we have 80% applied to this tile, from this tile. Um, so theoretically, we should have 0% possibility of increasing our attrition between the two tiles that are supporting that. Um, theoretically, but Inno did make a change that uh, the, the minimum amount of attrition possibility is 20%. So you cannot build camps to exceed the 20% mark, if that makes sense. Okay, so, um, the purpose of building camps is to create support. Um, so this uh, A4A is 40%, and you guys watched me do a few battles on that. My attrition was going up higher, right? I just gained another piece of attrition. My attrition is going up higher on this tile than it was on this 20% tile. So when we look at support, we're saying, okay, well, we have a 60% tower that's supporting this, so 100% chance of increasing attrition minus 40 equals 60 that's this camp and then when we look at the information tab we see that there's nothing built on f4c so if we built something on f4c and we would only need the the base building we would only need the 20 percent to reduce the attrition cost of, of a4a down to 20 um, but 
this is where the camp cost comes in. Let's say the camp cost of the 20%, which is all we need. Let's say the camp cost is 5 million silk. I don't think any of us have silk, right? So that's probably not the camp that we would want to build. But we do have a lot of these resources. So that's a camp that we could plant easily and our treasury can sustain that. Um, so that, that covers camp, the concept of a camp, what we build on the tiles, um, and it's either for attacking support only or attacking support as well as victory points. We're going to come back to the victory points in a little bit, um, but it, they both serve the purpose of supporting attack. Um, that's camp, and then the damage to your troops uh, on different tiers of supported tiles is your attrition rate. Um, the, the crossover between camp and support, um, they, we use them interchangeably sometimes, but there is a very small difference. Um, oops, sorry. There you go. F5C is open right now. Um, and it, doesn't have support, right? It's 100% because there's nothing built on F4C. There's no camp built on F4C. So it doesn't have support to attack it. But we also don't have support in the sense that F4C itself is open and there's an, there's an enemy already starting to attack that. Um, so uh, if Free Souls, this red team, let's say this red team is able to close this tile uh, faster than the white team can move here, uh, then we, as we're, as we're attacking this, our support would be closed behind us. Uh, so F4C is the only tile that gives access um, to F5C currently. So if red is able to close this before we can get onto F5C, we would lose support. So that's the distinction between support and camp. Um, they, they are kind of interchangeable, but the true definition of support is that you need a tile to, to move from in order to move to another tile, if that makes sense. Okay, so uh, next item on the list uh, is race. I'm actually going to talk about that last. Let's talk about rush real quick. Um, A2A did not have a building on it. I just planted that 60% uh, support. Let's say that um, let's say that this blue tile here is open currently and we need to take it for some reason. And I'm going to explain a couple scenarios to where you would quote unquote need to take that but let's say a to a uh, we we control we own that i just built the camp on it but let's say we need to take b to a immediately um it's not actually open currently it's not open for two hours uh, but hypothetically let's say we need to take that immediately this is where you would rush a camp so i built the camp i looked at the camp cost of goods um and we can afford the 60 percent. so that's what i built I could let it cook for three hours um, in this scenario. Um, there's there's really no reason to rush it. On a super competitive map, if you're playing against Uprising or something like that, then yeah, uh, you would need to rush that. Otherwise, they're going to hammer X1 and mess your day up. Um, but as slow as this season is going, I'm not super worried about these guys. Yeah, give it a minute, they'll move. Yeah, um, I'm not super worried about them hammering those tiles, so there's really no reason to rush this. Um, I was actually going to rush that tile, but let me look for a more purposeful tile if I'm going to spend diamonds. One second. Um, I tell you what, this is actually probably the way to go. I'm going to close this, and whatever needs to be built on there will rush, just so we understand the concept of rushing. Uh, hold, please. 
Okay, so uh, one more fight to go. There is a possibility that, um, so the owner is ancient, and they've planted a building on it already. There's a possibility that we uh, will keep that building after capturing it, uh, but not always guaranteed. In this case, we did keep it, um, but here's a better example of uh, what rushing means, and this is a little more purposeful since I am going to spend diamonds on this. Um, I'm going to delete their camp. It's only 40% support. I'm going to plant a new camp, and I'm going to rush it. And the purpose of doing this is to now have 40% support on this tile, A5C, uh, where previously we would have only had uh, four. 60% uh, support on that um, because the camp on A4B was only providing 40% su support, if that makes sense. It's also created additional support on the A4A tile that I was hitting earlier at 40%. So by building this, this tower, I've added um, support to this sector as well as support to this sector. Does that make sense? So that, that's the purpose of building the camp, and the purpose of rushing it is, let's say that this blue team is trying to uh, take over this aggressively, right? The, the purpose of taking this tile and then rushing the camp is to be able to uh, compete with them on another tile. And if we let the camp cook... Oops, sorry, trying to get rid of that. Like, this this tile does not have a, a thing planted on it. I'm going to find the cheapest thing that I can find. Uh, yeah, this is 8% to not increase attrition level. It takes one hour to build. That's the cheapest building. I'm not really trying to spend resources, because uh, we're going to lose that tile anyways. But, um... I just planted eight support on it, but until it's done, until it's built, we're still hitting 100% on, on the tile behind it. So the purpose of rushing that is to reduce your attrition level on the tile behind it if you do need to race another team. Make sense so far? Uh, so race is the last keyword that we need to talk about. There's two different scenarios uh, where you might end up with a race. There's two different scenarios for that. Uh, first scenario is here, where there's two different teams. There's free souls and greener pastures that are both theoretically racing to gain control of that tile. Um, we're at, we, we are in diamond, but we're in like the lower tier of diamond, so our competition is not as cutthroat as some of these higher level guilds. Um, but theoretically, right here, there's two different teams racing to gain control of that tile, right? Um, that's one way that you can have a race. The other way that you can have a race is um, this scenario right here, where both of these tiles are open. Uh, this, this tile is open. The Goon Squad has landed a few hits on it. This tile is also open. F4A is... Uh, has a few hits from free souls. So the race here is not against, um, it's not red versus green on this tile. It's white trying to escape onto this tile before red can close the only tile that supports it. Um, so two different definitions of races. This is red versus green here, and this is white versus the the closure of the only tile that supports the ability to reach this tile. Does that make sense? Um, so there's some tiles where, um, let's look at this, this pink tile, A4 or something, um, we have the ability to attack this tile from three different locations. Um, so it's not really a race against support on there. Um, if anything, it, it might be a timer, and I'll talk about timer and the strategy part of this. Let's let's just get some keywords down for now. Same thing on this tile. We have support 
from two different tiles. Uh, support, support, support. Makes sense. But when we come over here, our ability to capture this tile is only supported by one tile. So the quote unquote race here is for us to be able to gain this tile before we lose this tile. Does that make sense? Um, tie it back into the rushing thing. Um, let's say this is a real race and not a snail's race. Let's say it is an actual race. Um, this tile is the tile that we're trying to move to is 100% possibility of attrition increase. So every single person that hits this will increase their attrition by one every single time they engage with it. Um, so if you have a small crew like we do, they will run out of the ability to fight before you can actually close that tile. So this is where the rushing comes in. Oh. We need F5C, or F5A, sorry. We need to get that tile for whatever reason. We need to get that, but it's really painful to hit. Like, my troops keep dying. Can we rush the camp in order to reduce the attrition cost of, of hitting that tile? Um, that's how all those words interchange. Uh, I think that's it for terminology. I'm going to pause it real quick, make sure I didn't forget anything, and then we'll get into the strategy set. I did forget one keyword, a uh, very important keyword, actually. Please forgive me. Uh, VP is victory points. This is your placement in the, in the season, um, as well as the championship overall. So we're in first place uh, because we have higher VP than anyone else. And VP per hour does not necessarily put you in first place. We, we happen to have the highest VP per hour as well. Um, but if you look at number two, it has 1,600 VP per hour versus number three at 2,500. Number three is generating more VP per hour. Um, but the number two guild has accumulated more VP overall. So the difference there is the rewards that you'll get at the end of this, um, which is primarily GBG towers. I don't really care about that. Um, and as a, as a crew, the goon squad does not really care about the GBG towers either. Um, we mostly just enjoy the, uh, the, the fighting itself and not necessarily the end prize. Um, and then as, as a server as a whole, your victory points will determine your rank in the top 10, if that makes sense. Um, so VP is the last keyword and probably the most important. It's funny that I forgot about it, but it's really not a thing that we care about here. So, uh, and like to complete that thought, to be perfectly honest, the, the appeal to me for GBG uh, the, the towers are kind of irrelevant to me. It's goods and diamonds that I'm trying to harvest out of this, as well as the minor GBG buildings. Uh, so there's two fragments of Glimdrake. I've got three of them planted currently. Um, there's 146 goods, troops, as well as some decent attack stats. That's really my motivation for harvesting GBG. Um, victory points is really not the main criteria. Um, but if you are the number one guild, then uh, those victory points matter. And like down to the wire, they're pretty close on first and second place. So two reasons to rush. Uh, first reason here, I didn't rush this building. I found a different tile to close and rush that building just as a more constructive example. I did not rush this building. Um, but the... The second reason of rushing a building is not to gain support, but to gain victory points. So even though this tile is closed for another two hours, um, we're generating 134 victory points. You can see that right here. It's 134 victory points. If I rush this building, this fortified guild command post, which generates 100% more victory points, we would be generating 268 victory points off of that tile by rushing the camp. Uh, so two reasons to to rush camp construction, and that's to get uh, support 
as as you move across the map like let's say we take this tile next and we need support here that would be one reason to rush a camp the other reason to rush a camp is to increase your victory points on tiles that you already control that are still locked down for a couple hours but you're trying to increase your victory points um, in order to get first place in the season or first place in the server-wide championship uh, so that covers it for uh, terminology let's get into strategy and i'm going to keep this part pretty brief because um, every guild is is different when it comes to strategy um, it depends on your your firepower uh, how many people you have on when they're on uh, the the opponent that you're paired with there's a lot of variables so i'm not going to get into it a whole lot uh, the number one strategy for gbg is just outspend and I hate to say it, but this is the truth, and this is outspend on diamonds, as well as goods. And that is the number one strategy of GBG. Um, you can see there's several tiles where we haven't built uh, camps. I built this one for the purpose of the video, but I didn't rush it, obviously, and it's a cheap camp at that. Um, it's it's late in the season it, it closes in the morning um, we have a pretty substantial lead so there's no way that we're going to lose first place so there's really no reason to be building camps um, for us anyways and we're not trying to compete with number one on the server uh, so we have no reason to spend goods or to rush construction of camps uh, the num the number one number two guilds they're probably going uh, ballistic right now trying to squeeze out the last few victory points that they can to compete with each other for number one on the server uh, but that's that's not really our our metric but that is the bottom line of of gvg is to outspend so when it comes to goods um uh recruit people with high level arcs or or at least encourage the people that you do have to grow those buildings, ARC, OBS, AI core, things like that. Um, we are never hurting for goods. Even though we're a small team, we have the resources to build any tower that we want, whenever we want, however many times we want. We are never short on goods. Even though it's a small team, um, if you look at our roster, it's just... bunch of really experienced high level players right and i'm way down here at the bottom <laughs> uh, a lot of really top level players so we're never hurting for goods right um that's part of it the other part of it is the diamond um outspending factor in order to rush those camps and i mean if free souls was inclined to outspend us they could diamond this camp this camp this camp and gain momentum on us um, they're not wired that way that's not really their priority which, which is why we were able to get first um, but hypothetically that's how that would work uh, my my strategy with the the diamond expense is just to recycle what i'm generating from the map um, so you guys watch me get uh, 45 diamonds just in the few fights that I did I usually get around 300 diamonds a day and I recycle that back into GBG for the benefit of my team usually make a profit of 50 or 100 diamonds a day maybe um, but it, it's not a whole lot right? I'm also not buying diamonds to supplement that I'm just recycling what I get from the map and put it back into the team take my extra 50 diamonds, buy a couple shards in QI, uh, rinse and repeat, right? Um, so number one strategy is outspend, which doesn't really fit the goon squad uh, mentality. Number two strategy is timer control. This is a big one, and this is very much how we operate. Timer control kind of eliminates the need to dump resources timer control is the, the biggest part of gbg strategy in my opinion 
Um, let's let's look at a practical example of how that would work. Okay, so um, here's a really good example. B2A doesn't open uh, for an hour and 52 minutes. Okay. X1 opens in an hour and 11 minutes, and A2A opens in an hour and 46 minutes. So this opens in 146, 111, and 152. This one is already open. <clears throat> so there is, if blue closes this tile, we will have no way to reach B2A uh, because they have a timer. Remember that word? They have a timer advantage in order to hit A2A. This doesn't open for six minutes after A2A opens. So they'll be able to close A2A with the timer advantage from B2A and then X1 after that. Here's where white would set up or be able to set up the timer advantage. Uh, B3A opens in an hour and three minutes. And A4C is already open, obviously. We can move to A4C and load it Load and hold is what we call it, so we'll fill it 99% of the way, but don't close it, so we don't take control of it. We don't take control of it until, uh, ideally, an hour and 53 minutes. I didn't tag those, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> another commander is looking at the same thing that I'm looking at. Uh, that's funny. Nice nice to be in a team that, that thinks alike, right? Um, so after we load and hold A4C, hold it for as long as we can. If we can hold it for two hours, that would be ideal. Um, we can move to here from there, but we can wait to close B2A until they close X1 and A2A, but we'll have a two-hour timer advantage on B3A. So after the dust settles up here, we can come back in behind them. Um, timer advantage is also a big thing on manipulating your way. Uh, pause my video at some point. I don't remember where I left off, so I'm going to have to edit that. Um, the, the purpose of timer control, though, uh, A4C is open, and we can hold that. We can also preload uh, B3B straight from A3. But we can set up a timer on here that's paired against the timer of B2A um, and wait two hours so that when X1 opens, blue will potentially move to that, or red, um, but someone is going to move to our X1 position. But we're going to wait two hours to do that and time A4C timer with that move so that as this team moves to that, will be five minutes ahead and taking out tiles behind them. Um, so if we look at the openings on these, that opens in 37 minutes, that opens in 57, This open, that's open now currently, that opens in 52, that opens in 8, that opens in 46, this opens in an hour and 10, but it's ahead of X1, that opens in an hour and 5. Um, so timer control is a big part. Um, this opens in an hour and five. This opens in an hour and ten, but we're going to lose X1 before we have access to this. By setting up timer manipulation on A4C, we'll be able to clean up these tiles um, after blue moves into the center. Does that make sense? I think that about sums it up. Um, in terms of terminology and strategy, outspend is the is the main strategy. Um, timer control is is the secondary strategy. Uh, build build smart, build according to the resources that you have and can sustain. And then, um, anyways, that about covers it. Um, we, we went over the main keywords and then some basic strategy. Um, the if you're a veteran, this you don't. You already know this stuff, so I hope you didn't take the time to watch it. But if you're new, I hope it was helpful. Um, another big thing that I forgot to mention doesn't really fall into strategy or keywords, but another big thing to 
to remember is communication. So communicate with your team. I I didn't tag these tiles. I haven't been tagging. I've just been making my video. I didn't tag these tiles. But I'm a commander, so I'm able to tag or ignore, right? Like I can throw a stop sign on that. But if my team doesn't understand why I chose to make that decision, there's going to be some miscommunication with people. What are we hitting? Why are we hitting it? And when are we hitting it, right? So if I change direction and say, all right, guys, kill C3B, I need to communicate to them, kill C3B so that we can move into into B4C or something. But communicate that with them and uh, use the use the targets or the stop signs to direct traffic that way if you do have commander rights um you you know if f2a is a pointless uh project which i don't know who tagged that but to me it looks pretty pointless uh we we could poof them from accessing x1 but uh c raiders has the ability to take that anyways so we're going to lose x1 either way uh poofing the red team here doesn't really change that I don't really agree with that tag, but I'll check my messages and see their reasoning, you know? Um, so if you do need to change direction, though, okay, this is not a good option. We need to move this way. Here's why. Communicate that uh, with your team members. Um, because every everyone in the goon squad is a high-level player, but we've all got the same two, two eyes. So it happens pretty much daily that one of us, myself included, will miss... Um, something opening or a timer or something but another commander catches that because they're looking at a different piece of the map and that's where that communication comes in so uh, Joe Schmo teammate says no no uh, you got your priorities all wrong we really need C3B let's set up a timer there and then set up some control in the B sector uh, so communication is is huge and once you understand the terminology like rush it hold it um, set up a timer, blow the camp. Um, so if you see another team, I guess that's the final terminology piece that we lost. If you see another team, this is a race that I should probably participate in. Um, but if you see another team loading your tile um, up to 199 and just holding it for several hours, you can blow that camp and uh, force them to take possession of the tile if that makes sense. All right, I'm being summoned. I'm going to hit this tile, and I don't really know what they expect from me at this point. I, but I'm going to hit some tiles, and I'll talk to you guys later.